So what does this chip, which is smaller than an insect, have to do with your health? And what does it have to do with hope? Clean water. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we have the same Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> another one. Another one. <laughs> They're everywhere. They're everywhere. So that is what I want to talk to you about today. I will say that I left a 20-year um, a career in plastics that was going pretty well for this chip. And I'm not going to ask you to care about it as much as I do. And I won't ask you to leave your careers for the chip. I do want you to just pause and consider with curiosity the possibilities for the world that this chip brings. That's all. That's all I'm going to ask. So yes, what are some of the world problems? Water. Every minute a child dies from water-related illness. Every minute. It's just, it's kind of staggering to think about it. Didn't even make, doesn't even make sense to me. When you think about 780 million people lack access to clean water. It's hard to imagine. What does that mean? It actually means one in nine, or about see, eight people in this room, or two and a half times the population of the United States. When I first heard that, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, what, what, what do they do, though? What do they do? And they do what that little boy does. And he may not be alive now, a minute from now. So that's one of our problems. And it's not just one of those over there problems. It's here, too. So in the United States, in the, uh, particularly in the western and the southwestern uh, states, we are pumping water out of the ground faster than we can replenish it. And really, the water tables are shrinking. And in some states, some certain locales, uh, it's recycling sewage water is not only a necessity for drinking water, but it's a reality. It's being done. So that's our water. How about our surfaces? Ebola, heard that? Term. I heard it on the way in this morning. I mean, it's everywhere, right? Ebola has been a reminder to us of just how fragile our public health systems are. And it hits us where we live. It's a, some people have been calling it an irrational fear, but I think it's a pretty rational fear. I think it's pretty rational. And that's just the surface germs. In the air, we have flu. I hope people have gotten their flu shots. We have flu. We had it last night on the way home. Again, um, there was an NPR special on tuberculosis. The airborne pathogens are fairly rampant as well. And in hospitals, where we used to go to get well, we're sometimes now going to get sick. Actually, more people are dying from hospital-acquired infections than HIV, breast cancer, and automobile accidents combined. It's crazy. And it's costing the United States alone $40 billion a year for hospital-acquired infection. So it's a big problem. And really, no matter where we look, germs are everywhere. And they're getting stronger. So what are we going to do? We're in the fight of our lives, right? What are we going to do? <laughs> I don't want to steal your thunder. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so hope comes from the sun for starters. So what kind of light does the sun produce? You can tell me. Now. Sunlight. Sunlight? Sunlight? Uh, ultraviolet. Else? ultraviolet light. Right. So ultraviolet light, when we think ultraviolet light, we might think sun lotion, sun tan, sunburn, sunscreen. Um, but there's a very specific part of the UV spectrum, the ultraviolet spectrum, that actually kills germs. That mechanism of that very well understood, and we don't have to talk about that. But, um, but it's really clear. And as a matter of fact, in um, New York State alone, over a billion gallons of water are disinfected with UV light. And if you drink out of the tap here in the Capital District, you, you may already be drinking UV disinfected um, water. So that's, that's water. And on surfaces, we talked about. Um, we talked about Ebola and, and the germs in hospitals. This robot, which some people actually name in these various hospitals, this one might be Gigi. Gigi's the name for one of these. And R2 Clean 2 was another name I heard. <laughs> so these robots, they're sending out um, UV light that's t something like 25,000 times stronger than the light of the sun. And they're disinfecting the surfaces and the, ho and the um, hospital rooms. 
And actually, in the last 30 days, the, the protocols for taking care of Ebola patients have been rewritten to include this disinfecting robot. And it goes in the rooms, and it gets the surfaces in the rooms, and it goes on the, uh, and it goes actually on the garb of the healthcare worker that's already dressed. And so they flash this thing, and then they, then they disrobe. So that's to keep people from, from getting sick. So it's an important technology. It's a tested technology. It's not a theory. It's a fact. These are results. These are real results. And the, and the results on the left that say 50%, the 50% number refers to outcomes, real outcomes of less people getting sick when UV disinfection is used in the hospitals. It's greater than several, many, many case studies on that. And the 80% number actually refers to airborne pathogen laboratory results and uh, real case study results in controlled experiments with a group of researchers from Harvard Medical for the airborne pathogens like tuberculosis and influenza and SARS. And the 99.99% on the, on the water side is actually conservative. It's, uh, it's um, point, there's four nines after that, harder to say. Um, for, for viruses and bacteria, protozoa, cysts, all the things that kind of can hurt us in our water. It's a very proven technology, and, it, and you don't get sick when you drink UV disinfected water. Matter of fact, I bring my UV disinfection with me. So now here is the exciting part. The exciting part is what if we could take all that power from those great big lamps and concentrate that into a tiny little chip? So that's the exciting part. This, in this little envelope, this is an LED. It's a light-emitting diode. It's not a lamp. It's a semiconductor device that emits light. And some of you may be converting some of your homes to LED, or you see them in the automobiles, or it's certainly in the displays. LEDs have had a tremendous impact on the lighting industry. And as a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, um, the Nobel Prize for Physics was, was, for physics was awarded to, um, to scientists that created the, the uh, white light LED. It's revolutionized the industry, and why? Because it's brought accessible, affordable, long-lasting, highly, highly, highly efficient lighting to all, all kinds of places, to so not just our homes and the places that we see them, but even remote areas where we don't see them perhaps so much. So LEDs themselves have revolutionized really the lighting industry. And now, with a really special crystal technology, it's a material technology, we can make LEDs that emit UV light. It's really that simple. And actually, this LED, it's actually a real one. Uh, we grabbed it this morning out of the lab. I have to bring it back. <laughs> um, this is a thousand times more powerful per unit area than the lamps that we're already using. So now you can start to think about places we can put these LEDs where we might not be able to access before. So that's the exciting part. Do you want to leave your careers yet? You don't need to. You really don't need to. It's OK. So when we think about semiconductor devices, and that's what this is, LED is a semiconductor device, we might think Intel Inside or computer. We, just, we certainly heard a, a really interesting software talk. We, we might forget that um, actually LED, uh, semiconductors are actually everywhere. Um, they're in our appliances, you hear smart appliances, they're in our cars, they're in our, you know, our TV, they're everywhere, they're actually everywhere. Smart grids, smart, smart everything. And, um, and, and, and in fact, that digital revolution has enabled the age that we're in right now, which we call the information age, right? So it's the semiconductor which did that. And we really, 30 years ago, we wouldn't even, nobody had a cell phone 30 years ago. And now, more people have cell phones than have access to a toilet. I mean, think about that. Think about that. Where are we going to be 30 years from now? So 30 years ago, no cell phones. Now, more people have access to a cell phone than access to a toilet. And imagine having to make that choice, right? Health and hygiene or technology. But what we're talking about is the opposite of that. We're creating the end. So it's not health and hygiene, or technology. It's health and hygiene, 
with technology, through technology. So that's what we're talking about. And it's with LEDs. So I'm optimistic. As you look around, thousands of companies, literally thousands of companies are embedding this LED technology, companies, governments, researchers, into every place that we live. So it's, so it's in hospitals and in drinking uh, fountains and in automobiles and in airplanes, every place that one can imagine germ likes to reside. And some that poss possibly haven't been imagined yet. Um, they're working on this today. So you'll start to see these. And I'm optimistic that we are on the cusp of a new revolution. And it's a revolution that will move us from the information age to the age of wellness. And all from a technology smaller than a bug. So that's all I had to say. Thank you.